Okay, thank you, Gerardo. So, first of all, I want to thank uh, to the organizers for this wonderful uh, quantum field theory in Carpet Space Time workshop. And uh, now I want to present a, a work that I've been doing in collaboration with Pau Beltran Palau, Jose Navarro Salas, and Silvia Pla. And I will be talking about how to parameterize a CPT invariant vacuum states in a radiation dominated universe. Okay. So the outline of the talk will be the following one. I will briefly sketch what are the characteristics of the early observable universe that we have. And I will explain why a CPT symmetric radiation dominated universe fits into that characteristics. Then I will move to, to introduce the CPT symmetry to the fields that live in this space time. So first of all, I will characterize the CPT symmetry, and then we will obtain two tenable vacuum states and study if both of them are admissible under the point of renormalization. Finally, I will uh, uh, show how the particle creation for these two examples uh, uh, is seen from the point of view of a, of a late time observer. So let me begin by explaining that the early universe that we observe today is well described by a spatially flat radiation dominated geometry. And on top, on top of that, we have a scalar scale invariant power spectrum. And the most popular explanation for this power spectrum is given by inflation that goes hand by hand by the phenomena of particle creation, first introduced by Leonard Parker. So we have these scalar density perturbations, but inflation also generates tensor perturbations that uh, would be the responsible to generate primordial gravitational waves. Okay? And this can be sketched from the following equation for the modes of the gravitational waves that are minimally coupled. That means that uh, the chi parameter is equal to zero. And we see that still we have a dependence on the curvature. So we don't have a Minkowski solution. And that would produce a, a particle creation. However, if instead of inflation, we have a radiation dominated early universe, this scalar curvature is zero. That's a very special property of the radiation dominated universe. So let me remind uh, a result from quantum field theory in Carter space time, which is the following one. In a Freeman level Robertson Walker space time, there is no particle creation for a conformal invariant fields. So this means that, for example, for scalar fields, massless and conformally coupled, uh, uh, the, the equation of motion is the following one. So we see that when the chi parameter is equal to one sex, we recover the Minkowski solution. Okay, but we would recover the same solution if the scalar curvature is zero in the whole space time. And this is what happens in a radiation dominated universe. So therefore, by noticing that this equation is the same that the one we showed before for gravitational waves, there is an important corollary. There is no creation of gravitons for a radiation dominated universe. Okay, and so far there have not been uh, tensor perturbations observed. For common observations will tell us if uh, uh, this inflationary cosmology model is true or not. However, in the meantime, one can explore alternative cosmic views. By following the observations of a rotation dominated universe, one could propose the following uh, freeman lemer robertson worker space-time with radiation dominated universe as an early time universe with the scale factor, which is proportional to the conformal time parameter. A property of this space-time is that it can be analytically extended to negative values of the conformal parameter. And by doing this, a new emergent time reversal symmetry appears. So under this transformation, the metric remains the same, okay? And there is <clears throat> an example of these uh, uh, properties 
that is recently proposed by Boyle, Finn, and Turok, which they call the CPT symmetric universe. In this universe, we have a two sheeted universe, uh, one filled with matter for positive values of the conformal parameter, and for negative values, it would be filled with antimatter. The main idea is that the state of the universe respects the CPT symmetry, and they try to explain the observed universe with fundamental principles. So in light of this, we propose to study the CPT uh, symmetry in the fields that lives in this space-time, and we usually do in quantum field theory in carbon space-time. And that is what I will be explaining briefly in the following slides. So we will consider a massive scalar field, which has the following Fourier uh, expansion in a radiation-dominated universe. Okay? For simplicity, uh, we studied the rescale by field, which has the following equation of motion. One can notice that for the modes, this equation of motion is invariant under time reversal, since the factor, uh, the scale factor is proportional to the conformal time parameter. The solutions to this equation are given by the parabolic cylinder functions. These are complicated solutions, but we won't go into detail in, in that. The main point is that the solution is determined by the initial conditions and, and, and the equation of motion. So by setting initial conditions that respect the uh, uh, time reversal symmetry, we will, we will obtain, as uh, we will see, a solution that respects this time reversal symmetry. So as we, usual, as we usually do in quantum field theory, setting a solution of the modes has associated a pair of creation and annihilating operation operators and therefore a vacuum state. By construction, as we saw in uh, this Fourier transform of the field, the freeman lemaire robertson walker vacuum states are invariant under special translations, rotations, charge conjugation, and parity. There is no time translation uh, uh, symmetry. Therefore, there is no preferred vacuum since we don't have a ground state of the Hamiltonian associated to a time-like curve. Time reversal, however, has not been considered so far. And that is what we will do now. The questions to answer are the following ones. How can we parameterize these CPT vacuums? So remember that C and P, charge conjugation and parity, are already uh, uh, implicit in the construction of, of a freeman lemaire robertson walker vacuum state. So we just have to impose time reversal condition, which is the following one for the moments. And the second question that we want to answer is, are all these vacuums admissible from the point of view of renormalization? This means that after renormalization, the vacuum expectation value of the stress energy tensor has to be finite, okay? So let's address these two questions. The first one, we do it by parameterizing the time reversal condition at the, uh, uh, at the big bang at the tau equals zero, which is the natural, the natural point to uh, impose the time reversal condition. By doing that, uh, this equation in the box, which is the time reversal condition, uh, is, is this, becomes this, these equations. And together with the normalization condition, we can parameterize the solution for these equations in the following way, where we have introduced a theta parameter, which is a real function on the, mo on the uh, vector mode k. Therefore, as we already mentioned, selecting a vacuum corresponds to making a choice of initial conditions and therefore making a choice of this theta parameter. Since there is no tra time translation, this choice has to be based in physical arguments. Now, I will present a, a, a preferred vacuum proposed by Boyle, Finn, and Turok in their articles, which is given by our parameter theta of k uh, by the following expression. This vacuum is of infinite adiabatic order, as we will see, and it minimizes the particle creation at late times. However, one can note that there is another tenable vacuum state, which is the, the minimal solution 
theta equals zero. And this is so because the field modes behave at the early times as the modes of a mathless conformally coupled field. Okay, so the next question is, are both vacuums admissible from the point of view of renormalization? So we need to impose ultraviolet regularity conditions. And since we are in a Freeman level reversal worker space time, this is easily done by setting adiabatic regularity conditions. By doing this, we will gain control of the large momentum behavior of the state. And therefore, we will get control of the divergence of the stress energy tensor. I won't go into the detail of the adiabatic regularization method. There has been also talks about that. And the adiabatic expansion will characterize the ultraviolet divergent behavior that the modes have to satisfy. The adiabatic condition will be a condition that we have to impose in the modes in order to get a vacuum expectation value stress energy tensor finite after renormalization. This will transform in a condition for the theta parameter. Okay? And this is the, the asymptotic behavior, the condition for the asymptotic behavior of this theta parameter that we have obtained. So now, the vacuums that we have presented. The first vacuum by Boyle, Finn, and Turok, one can study that it is a vacuum of infinite adiabatic order. That means that the expansion for the modes is equivalent to the adiabatic expansion to any order. And the minimal solution is also ultraviolet regular. And by this, we mean that the vacuum expectation value of the stress energy tensor, as I already mentioned, is finite. So the last part of the talk that I want to address is the particle creation that these vacuums uh, 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 would generate for a late time observer. So the vacuum is assumed to be CPT invariant and late time observers would define the out adiabatic vacuum by setting the modes to the following expression. Both bases are related by a Bogolyubov transformation. And it is well known that the average number density of created particles is given by the beta parameter. Therefore, by computing this quantity, we get uh, the number density of created particles. The vacuum stated by Boyle, Finn, and Turok has the following uh, uh, decreasing factor as k goes to infinity. This is a typical result for a, a, an adiabatic, or, uh, sorry, for an infinite adiabatic order uh, vacuum state with this exponential decreasing. And the minimal vacuum solution has the following form. So in summary, we have given a simple characterization of the CPT invariant vacuum states through setting a phase at the early times at the Big Bang. Moreover, we have characterized the asymptotic large behavior of this parameter in order to ensure a vacuum expectation value of the stress energy tensor, which is finite after renormalization. As a remark, one has to be careful by making predictions involving a preferred CPT vacuum state, since it is not unique. Here, for example, we have presented two natural physically sensitive choices, but there could be more. And finally, this analysis can be extended to fermions. And a very nice implication is the possibility to account for cold dark matter as a heavy right-handed sterile neutrino. This neutrino that only couples to, uh, to gravity would be created by the phenomena of particle creation by an expanding universe. And this is all I wanted to say. If there are any questions, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks for your, for your great talk. Uh, we have now time for some uh, questions. So if there are any questions, please. Okay, so there's one question by Morgan Lynch. Uh, um, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. 
Um, uh, this is a really interesting talk, actually. Um, my question had to do with, uh, okay, so, so far as I understand, if there's an initial momentum distribution of particles at the onset of inflation or at the beginning of the Big Bang, that that will also uh, uh, stimulate more particles that are created by this expansion. And uh, there might be signatures of that initial state in the CMB. And um, so the question is, is because you have this CPT symmetric universe, is, is there going to be some sort of um, kind of a smoking gun signature for that? Because I guess the distribution of particles now would be you know symmetric about the about the big bang do you know what i'm saying like so in this case we know what the initial distribution of particles is because we have it in our universe at the early time but when you flip it over to the other side of the big bang you would have that initial you know it's the like a symmetric initial state i guess but is that something that could be like like a smoking gun for these things uh, uh i'm not sure about what you're asking mm, maybe uh, uh, are you relating this question to how could we generate a, a, an initial power spectrum which is invariant or something like that? No, in the sense, I think uh, I think Parker did this with with Ivan Agulio. I don't know if you're familiar with that work in the tri spectrum, where you can see there's uh, what what the initial distribution of particles, or I think that's the back reaction of particles created. But just that if you have an initial momentum distribution of particles, say of radiation in the in the, you know at the beginning of the universe, that that distribution of momentum will imprint itself on the uh, in the cmb like say anisotropies in the cmb yeah but 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 uh, uh well i actually i'm not very familiar with that world uh, um and uh, therefore I, i'm not sure about how to answer your question i'm sorry maybe maybe we can talk more about that in this okay. lab you can okay. to me in more detail okay well, cool talk though i appreciate it <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks for the question, Morgan. Uh, are there any other further questions? Okay, there is a question by Antonio Ferreiro. Please, Antonio. Yeah. Hi, Sergi. Thank you for, for your nice talk. Um, so I have a question because it, it, it was surprising that when you showed that the number of particles uh, differ uh, between the vacuum state and and one of them it's the traditional exponential law that you would have um like a, a black body spectrum but then it's it's quite strange about why, why does the the vacuum you propose goes as k, a, k to the minus eight um i don't know if you have uh, tried to understand and understand that because usually when you have some standard vacuum state at early times and then you have, let's say, the Mikowski uh, vacuum on late times. You are expect to have like this kind of exponential uh, law. So yeah, I just wanted to ask you about that. And maybe if you have tried to compute the energy density of both vacuum states to see if there is a big difference or not in the in the particle creation during this 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 epoch. Mm, well, we have. We have computed the, the the whole stress energy tensor, but to study if it is renormalizable, we have checked it is. And uh, uh, um, the fact, I think the fact that this exponential factor that they have uh, uh, in, in their vacuum state is because the way they construct it by taking, maybe I can show you, these slides, these slides here, they construct the vacuum by taking the adiabatic solution at late times for one uh, 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 part of the universe and for the other part of the universe with negative values of the conformal parameter. And they propose this preferred vacuum as these linear combinations. So both vacuums are of infinite adiabatic order and that's why they get uh, uh, this exponential decay. But for the initial vacuum with minimal, minimal coupling, uh, in, in principle, you, 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 you don't need to have that uh, exponential decay. Because it is not of infinite adiabatic order. OK, 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 I see, I see. Thank you. OK, so if there are more questions, uh... Okay, there is one question by uh, Wayne Yuan, please, whenever you want. Uh, yes, 
So thank you all for the very nice talk. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we don't hear you very well. It's like there is a lot of noise there. Uh, maybe, maybe you can write it in the chat. Well, actually, if you want, you can write it in the Slack channel, and we can and you can further discuss it there because we are, we are a little bit out of time. So, if that's okay for you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. we thank the speaker again, Sergi. Thanks for this great talk.